Hi, it's Chris from Optinet, here to give you an overview of the English EGO system, which was rolling out in Flex from October, November 2019. So let's log into Flex and have a look at how it appears on a patient record. What you see once EGOS has been set up is the EGOS button towards the top right hand corner of the system. Separately in the setup which we'll have done with you we'll have made sure your signature pad is linked up and helped you with the tablet apps be it on iPad, iPhone or Android that you might be using uh, and also made sure that everything is communicating with the NHS servers. So firstly a recommendation make sure everything appears correct on the patient record. We have had issues with poor data entry on patient records for example around postcodes causing some issues which can delay in the submission of claims so do make sure all the details on the patient appear as they should. But then we can choose EGOS, NHS England, and we've got GOS 1 and GOS 3. Let's have a look at GOS 1 firstly. If I click on New Claim, Flex will ask us, do I want to select a site test uh, before creating the claim? So if I say yes, then what I can do is go and um, into the form. I've, I've selected, I've only got one test, which is why there's no picker that came up, but it's brought up my record with all my information. If you don't select one, then it can easily be loaded on after the patients um, had their exam put on. So if you're getting the form signed first on the paper version, as it were, then you can still do the equivalent on the computer. So this is what the GOS one looks like on Flex. It's brought through all my information. And at the moment, there are eight errors which have been found. So as we go through, we can tick the boxes to make sure all of the information on here is correct. So again, this is a demonstration one, which is why there's been a few issues on it. But what I can now do... Um, is ask the patient to sign their form. The default signature method would have been set up with one of the support team. It will either be the uh, the screen or on the computer in rare occasions, which mine is just for this training example, but it will be either the tablet or the signature pad. But when we press this button here for the patient to sign, what Flex is going to do is it will now trigger your default method, so be it the signature pad or the tablet, and it will ask the patient to confirm their details, just check their name, address, date of birth, etc. correct. If they tap the tick or the smiley face for that, then it will bring through to sign the declaration. So what they can do then is sign the details, which is then updated with the patient's information here. So the declaration and everything has now been filled out. The only thing that's missing on this one is the performer signature. I will show you how the optometrist can what we call sign for the day. So they can do that through Flex without being in a form. Or if I do this now as the optom, which is notably different, so we know it's the different one there, it's brought it all through. No errors now, and this claim can be submitted. So I could press submit to submit it now. Or if I press save, I can come back to it if I want to continue it. So just to show you under GOS1 continue claim, it's brought up the claim which I've done. That was ready from a couple of moments ago, and it's all good to go. GOS3 works in a very similar fashion. With GOS3, we've got new and continue claim, which works in a very similar way to the, uh, to the GOS1. But just to show you what the form looks like, we can go through and correct all the errors as we go. The little red exclamation marks will let you know if there are problems. It will tell you about them, and you can go through and get the information there. So GOS3 continue claim, like I did with the GOS1, would be to come back to one separately. All of a patient's claims you can see by pressing on patient's claims. And the patient's signature, if you want to trigger your signature pad or the app, if you press send to capture, it will push the details through. Or if for some reason it's not been received in Flex, retrieve signature will pull that information in from the other device. Under GOS3, we've also got takeaway GOS3 voucher. So if someone does want to take their um, dispense elsewhere, then it creates a voucher with a lot less fields. It says here more fields at the bottom. Uh, but what you'll be able to do is put all that information in and that classes as what's called a takeaway voucher. And indeed, if someone's bringing a dispense to yourselves from elsewhere, we've got retrieve GOS voucher. On the bottom of that takeaway was what's called a voucher code and an authorization. If people give you that, of course, it would require the original optometry of the test to have their practice using EGOS, you'd be able to put in the voucher and authorization code. GOS4 is due to come in the first half of 2020. Under business intelligence, you'll see a new option under general and voucher reports called eOphthalmic claims for NHS England. 
what you'll be able to see here is all the claims which you've got due to go through and you'll be able to see all the different statuses as they go through the system of what's happening. You can split by GOS1, GOS3, VO, that stands for voucher, so that's the takeaway vouchers for the GOS3 form type and you can also search by claim references. You can refresh all your recent claims. I'm not currently connected to the NHS servers, which is why my uh, connection check has failed, but you'll be able to check all the claims through there. So all the claims that happen through here and the GOS forms themselves all live on the patient record under eGOS. There's plenty of resources around this online, optinetuk.com forward slash support and you'll also find the details there if you haven't yet registered for EGOS. If you haven't, what you need to do is fill out our staging form which gives us your TP code, your username for the PCSC administration and then we as your software provider will have to request what's called a PSK, that stands for pre-shared key and we'll get you up and running as quick as we can. Lead times, generally speaking, are anything between about two to four weeks to get you set up. Any more questions though, you can give us a call too. 0800 310 2400